Good afternoon and thank you for joining us this afternoon for this Arctic Inform webinar on the Analyze Bus Open Data Service. This afternoon we're going to be looking at the on-time performance module. Um, we held a uh, session on um, an introduction to, to the Analyze service last month uh, and that is available on our YouTube channel. Um, for those of you that weren't with us for that um, session, we are running this session uh, in conjunction with the Department of Transport and ETO World as part of the Bus Open Data Service launch activities. Um, this session is being recorded and will be made available through the Arctic YouTube channel uh, in the next couple of days. You will get a copy, you'll get a link to, to that um, on your email and that will help you um, review anything that you want to, uh, to, to just um, check up on and to share the link with your colleagues who might not have been able to uh, join us. We are extremely keen for this to be as interactive as possible to make sure that we answer as many of the questions that you've got uh, as we can. So please do feel free to use the chat function that we've got um, on this uh, software and we'll um, pick up uh, those questions and either answer them uh, as we go along or uh, we'll have a uh, Q&A session at the end and uh, pick the rest up then. Um, so, um, Welcome to this session. For those of you that uh, haven't come across Artig before, uh, we're a membership body for public transport technology stakeholders, and we have a membership that covers everything from bus operators through to uh, authorities and system <coughs> suppliers and consultants and the, uh, and the government uh, and devolved authorities in the UK. Um, and we uh, work to provide education, events like this, um, produce technical standards and best practice guidance for public transport technology. Um, and we, uh, we represent um, the UK on a number of um, European uh, and international standards groups to make sure that uh, the UK's interests are appropriate addressed and, and covered in those standards. Um, so that's uh, a very brief introduction to Artig. Please visit our website if you want to find out more or get in contact um, afterwards. Um, I want to spend, make sure that we have as much time as possible uh, this afternoon looking at the uh, Analyze Bus Open Data Service. And so um, I'm going to hand over now to uh, Dan from ETO World, who's going to run through um, the, um, the the tools and the on-time performance um, side of it for you. So welcome, Dan. Thanks, Tim, for the introduction, and thanks everyone for joining. I'm just going to share my screen. Um, so yeah, I've, I've just introduced the se session. So we're going to look at analyzed bus open data and um, the on-time performance section of that, as Tim mentioned, and we're also then going to look at how the data quality um, affects uh, what is shown to you within that um, section of the tool. Um, so before we do that, I just wanted to uh, introduce uh, who ETA World is. So we're the Department of Transport's technical partner for um, both the Bus Open Data Service, so the core service which you upload your data to, and this service, Analyze Bus Open Data. Um, so I'm Dan Jones, I'm a product manager um, for the Analyzed Bus Open Data Service and I'll introduce my colleagues. Uh, Patrick, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, thanks Dan. Uh, hi all. Yeah, I'm Patrick Smallman, a support engineer at ETA World. I recently uh, joined Dan, Amy and Kamal's team with the Analyzed Bus Open Data Service as well as uh, helping with a few other uh, transit hub 
uh, services. I've predominantly been helping with uh, the onboarding in, uh, with people such as yourselves with ABOD, as well as some uh, user case queries that have come with that. So I'll uh, pass it on to Amy. Thanks, Patrick. Thanks, Dan. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Amy Bridge. I'm a project manager at Eto World, and I work with the Department for Transport and others on the BODS uh, program. And so I work across both the Bus Open Data Service itself and also analyze Bus Open Data. And I'll let Kamal introduce himself now. Thanks, Amy. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm uh, Kamal. I'm a product manager and I work uh, for the Bus Open Data Service. I manage the uh, features and requirements uh, on the Bus Open Data Service. Thank you. Perfect. Thanks, everyone. Um, so, yeah, today I'll give you a very quick reminder. So, there'll be a couple of slides that were on the last webinar, um, just to, some very quick background to the Bus Open Data Service and how that fits in with um, analyzed bus open data. Um, I'll then quickly give a demo of the on-time performance um, section and show you the features in there. And then we'll come back to the slides and, and talk through um, how good data quality relates to the analysis that you can get from analyzed bus open data. Um, and Kamal will, will um, talk through a few um, bits from the core service as well that'll, that'll help you with that. Um, then we'll have a, a session at the end for questions. Um, so if you have any questions as we go along, please post those in the chat um, and we'll either pick them up if we can um, as we go along or we will um, have that section at the end to, to answer anything. Um, so just a quick reminder of, of BODS itself. Um, so there are two main services um, in BODS. So there's the published service, uh, which operators can use to provide their schedules. Um, in Transit Exchange format, um, the AVL in Siri VM format, and the FAIRS in NetX format. Um, and there's also the consume side. So this is where data consumers can, can come to pick up your data. Um, and they can pick that up in the raw format. Um, we also kind of turn your data into GTFS and GTFS RT, which is um, uh, slightly easier for some data consumers to pick up, um, especially journey planners. And then we provide an API as well, where um, data consumers can, can search the the full data set um, on BODS and, and take the data that they need, or they could just download it all as a bulk download. Um, so how this relates to analyzed bus open data is we built what we call an integrated transit model um, that takes in the trans exchange um, and the AVL um, Siri VM feeds. It matches it together so we can work out which vehicle is, is running on which journey in the schedules. Um, and then it continuously archives that down um, so that's kind of constantly being archived um, so we can see every departure that's kind of happened at a stop within the system. Um, and then we can provide that data to analyze bus open data um, for a variety of different use cases and user groups. Um, so the, the kind of user groups that are currently using it are operators, um, authorities like yourselves, um, and then DFT and, and DBSA and so on are also using it. And, and the kind of use cases that we have at the moment, are the uh, feed monitoring aspects, um, which we talked about briefly last time, um, which you can also subscribe to some alerts for. Um, and the main kind of chunk of what we're going to be talking about today is the schedule adherence um, and, and on time performance as well. Um, so we covered that and I'll quickly jump into the service itself and just give a quick demo of the functionality before we continue um, with the slides. So one second, I'll just share my screen, different screen. So within the main service, when you log in, um, you'll be showing this dashboard and this will be showing um, aggregated data for all of the operators that you have access to. Um, so you can see in here all of the operators you have access to in this drop dropdown. Um, and the data that's displayed on the dashboard is simply all of that data together. Um, so this gives you on time performance figures um, for all of those operators. Uh, it gives you the top three lines in your area. Um, it also gives the bottom three performing lines in the area as well. Um, so that gives you a quick overview of, of what's performing well and what, what's performing badly. Um, it also gives you slightly different kind of date range views. So you can just look at data from the last seven days, compare it to the month to date and the last 28 days and so on. 
Um, just a reminder that on time, early and late, the definitions um, for late is anything over five minutes and 59 minutes, uh, sorry, five minutes, 59 um, departing late, and early is anything that departs more than one minute early. Um, on the right side, there's some kind of real time feed monitoring stats. So this um, tells you the number of vehicles that the system expects to be receiving. So we look at all the schedules that, that we're kind of pulling in for all of the operators um, that this year user has available um, and then we look at journeys and see how many should be running right now um, and then we look in the real-time feeds and say how many vehicles can we find that are kind of allocated to those schedules and currently running so these numbers um, once everyone is providing their data well, should be very close together um, and then we have some brief feed monitoring stats so um, this will tell you if you have any feeds that are currently not working so for example these two operators may not be providing real-time data right now um, and you can dig into the details of that if you want, as, as we went through last time. Um, so with the on-time performance section, um, you can also just select one operator here. Um, so you can see this update uh, just for that single operator. So you can see some overview stats just for that one operator and, and their top three and bottom three lines. Um, and again, on the, on the right side, this updates. Um, so you can see um, this operator is providing uh, real-time data and we're getting um, uh, data from the schedules and, and also data from uh, the AVL feeds that are matching to those schedules as well. Um, so those numbers should be as close together as possible to get a kind of complete um, analytics data set. If we click on the on-time performance section, um, we can go in and find the operator we were just looking at from the dropdown, um, and we can see how the operator has performed over the time range you select. So you can select any time range here that, that you wish. Um, and click apply and the graph will update to show um, day by day the time um, range that you've selected and how the on-time performance has um, worked across that time range. Um, you can view a, a few different graphs so you can for example view the time of day how how the operator um, performs across the day so um, you can see here aggregated from 5 a.m in the morning to 8 p.m at night how the operator is performing so you can see if there's any particular times of the day where the operator struggles and the same for day of the week as well um, so you can see if there's any particular day of the week um, that an operator performs better or worse um, and you can also see a distribution um, so we want all of the departures to be centered on a zero minute delay but you can obviously see some departures um, go out into kind of very late um, departures and some towards the early side as well um, currently by default uh, the analysis you're looking at is for all the stops in your schedules if you just want to view um, the performance for timing points you simply click this toggle up here and that will just uh, give you information on the screen for timing points only um, you can click some filters as well so if you just wanted to pull in data from during the week um, you can deselect Saturday and Sunday um, and if you just wanted to view uh, data from rush hour for example you can apply these filters um, that we've made available and that will update the information that you're viewing on the screen um, for those filters if you scroll down below you can see the overview stats for all the filters you've applied um, you can search for a service if you want so if you know a service that you want to have a look at you can search in the search bar um, and you can see in this table below the scheduled number of departures um, that we would expect um, the percentage of recorded departures. So this is where we've actually got uh, real-time departure data for when that bus departed the stop. Um, so we want this to be as high as possible. So we have a, com a complete analysis of the data. Um, and then you can see the average delay for that line and then the general on-time early and late stats. Um, they're provided as a percentage. If you want to see the actual raw numbers of departures, you can sele uh, select the count toggle here. Um, and see the uh, actual raw number of departures that we're holding uh, rather than percentages for on time early and late. Um, if you want to see some more detail for a particular line, you simply click in to that line and on the screen we see um, the same analysis uh, provided at an operator level um, down at a line level. Um, the only difference on this page is down below what we see are the stops that belong to that service. So we can see slightly more granular information. Um, again, scheduled departures at the stop, recorded departures, average delay at that stop, and then the metrics for on time, early and late. Um, 
you can see the the naptan code for that stop here as well as the name um and this little uh, stopwatch here indicates that it's a timing point um so if we turn the the timing points toggle on um, we'll see all the numbers update and then we'll just see the timing points in the list here um, by default these are ordered from the best performance down to the worst performance um, so that's something to keep in mind the, the next sort of feature that we're adding to this page is so we can display this information on a map so obviously right now uh, this isn't ordered in a geographic way so what we want to do is make available a map so you can so you view this information on the map as well um, so that's what we're going to be doing in the next couple of releases um, so hopefully that gives you a good good view of the functionality that we have at the moment for on-time performance and i'll just jump back into the slide show now so i wanted to talk through um some feedback that we had from the last webinar is was a lot around the accuracy and of the numbers being displayed and, and specifically uh, what numbers were being displayed and, and how they were being calculated and so on. Um, so what we wanted to talk through is uh, essentially what does it take to build accurate on-time performance analysis. So we want to talk you a little bit through how the system works, but also how you can help the system to produce uh, accurate analysis as well. Um, so we've come up with some building blocks that the system uses to produce this analysis and some of them are quite basic but really essential um, and some of them are slightly outside of your control but we can talk through how how the system uses them um, so we'll talk through these one by one just to give a quick overview the the kind of bottom uh, rung of this the foundation element is is valid current trans exchange data published on bots um, We'll talk through a bit what that means in a second, but the data must include a national operator code. It must have current date ranges. Um, where that isn't the case, we simply can't produce any analysis. Um, so if you haven't got this foundation element right, we won't be able to produce accurate analysis for you. Um, working up the chain, is the trans exchange data correct and up to date? So is it of good quality? Is it accurate, complete, and up to date with appropriate versioning? We'll talk through that in a second as well is the Siri data published on bots? So once we've got the timetables data, is the Siri data published and is it accurate? Um, and, and are we getting a kind of constantly maintained live feed of that information? Um, then we get into a bit more of the details. Are we able to match that trans exchange data to the Siri data? So it's great having both data sets, but if we can't identify which vehicles are running on which journeys very well, we, we can't provide accurate analysis. And in some cases we can't provide any analysis. Um, we had some questions about how the system perform, how the system was producing numbers um, versus other systems. So we wanted to just talk through um, the parameters that we use to classify on time early and late performance. And then right at the top, the slight differences you get um, in the algorithms that are used by these different systems uh, as well. So we'll just go into the detail of that. The first one we wanted to talk about um, is obviously this core foundation element. And just before I hand over to Kamal, who's going to talk through some more about this, I just wanted to look at some numbers. So right now in BODS, uh, we have 480 organizations in total. Only 283 of those are publishing trans exchange. So, so right away, we have a number of operators that haven't published trans exchange yet. So that's a huge number of people who we can't receive any analysis for. Um, if we look at the, the national operator codes of the people publishing um, trans exchange data, three quarters of them are using correct national operator code. So that gives us a straight, uh, straightforward in on producing the analysis. Um, however, 25%, around 25% on um, publishing data, but without the correct NOT code or without any NOT code at all. Um, and straight away, uh, that means that we, we simply can't uh, produce analysis for that operator in an accurate way. Um, so there are lots of people publishing data, which is great, but we, we can't use it to produce um, good analysis for them. So that's a kind of quick kind of intro to the numbers that we're looking at right now and kind of straightforward things we can do to improve what's what's showing in the system. Um, but to talk through the details a bit more, I'll just hand over to Kamal um, to talk through how this works in the main uh, system. Yeah, thank, thanks, Dan. Uh, so uh, as Dan mentioned, uh, one of the key uh, things for getting 
analysis in AWARDS is to ensure that the trans exchange data is published in boards and that accurate NOC information is also provided. So to ensure that trans exchange data is published, the, uh, the first thing you need to do is uh, log into boards and use the publish bus open data service uh, to publish timetable as well as location data uh, so that a board can then use both of these data to match them. Uh, so I'll give a quick demo towards the end on how to do this. Some of you may already be knowing it, but it'll be worth going over that again. Uh, Dan, can you go to the next slide, please? So another, uh, in, uh, in addition to publishing trans exchange data, uh, a key information that we need for matching uh, data is in NOC code. And uh, as Dan mentioned, uh, there are quite a lot of operators who are still not providing the NOC code. So where do where can we get this NOC code? So this uh, the NOC code can be found from the travel line data link that uh, uh, is displayed here. Uh, so from there, uh, for each of the operators, the NOC information can be caught, and that's the NOC that we expect to be provided inside the data set being published in boards as well. Uh, the impact of NOC not being there is uh, it, it affects the ability to match uh, data across the different data types. Uh, so therefore, it's important that uh, NOC, accurate NOC information is provided. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, so once you have uh, you know, published the trans exchange data, uh, it's also important to maintain that the data is accurate by periodically updating the trans exchange uh, data with the appropriate versioning. So, uh, so the next slide. So in the next slide, so here we, uh, we see how you can update the data in BODS. Uh, so BODS provides uh, two different ways of updating the data. So if you had manually published the data in BODS, uh, if you get got into the data set detail, there is an option to update the data set manually. Alternatively, if you chose to uh, publish using the URL option, then whenever a change, when, whenever there is a change in the data set at the end of the URL, Boards will automatically pick up the data uh, twice a day, once early in the morning uh, around 5 a.m. and another time uh, at 5 p.m. in the evening. So it's 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 important that the operators ensure that the data is available uh, in a, uh, and updated accurately because it's critical for a boards to provide a, a accurate analysis. Uh, next slide. So. Once you have you know published your data set in boards uh, and also uh, maintain the data set uh, periodically, uh, the next key piece of uh, thing that you need to take care is ensuring that the data inside the data set is uh, of good quality. So boards provides two distinct services uh, to help uh, operators identify these data issues. Uh, the first is a data quality report. So whenever a data set is published, BODS runs a few tests to ensure that the data is of good quality. Uh, I'll go over what those tests are, uh, those specific tests are in the coming slides and in the demo. Uh, but these tests will then provide, uh, after these tests are run, BODS will provide a data quality report as well as a score, uh, which tells, which, which indicates, you know, uh, what's the quality of data and if any action needs to be taken on that. Uh, the second service that BOTS provides is a, a compliance report. So uh, as you might be aware, uh, the trans exchange data published in BOTS should uh, comply with the 2.4 schema. Uh, however, there are uh, different ways in which the same data can be structured uh, in, in 2.4 schema. So this BOTS PTI standards, uh, which are, uh, are, are an additional set of uh, standards that ensure that all of the data supplied into BODS are uh, pro structured in the same format. And it also ensures that uh, the information that is needed for matching, like uh, appropriate versioning and NOC information are also provided in the BODS, in, in the data set. So these two uh, reports will be available to you uh, from BODS. Now let's look at how the data quality report, where you can access the data quality report in BODS. Uh, then if you go to the next slide. Yeah, so if once you log, uh, so whenever uh, you publish a data set or it's updated, uh, and when the data quality report is generated, uh, an email will be sent to you. Uh, in addition to that, uh, you can also manually log into BODS uh, and go into the data set detail. And there'll be a link which uh, allows you to click and view the data quality report in detail. Uh, 
so these uh, these are uh, these tests are categorized in critical and advisory uh, sections and they can also be exported in a csv format so that if you wanted to share this report to your supplier uh, to fix some of the issues they can be done easily as well so the issues uh, uh, which are identified as critical are incorrect knock code uh, if there are fast timings or backward timings and if the date ranges uh, are not correct uh, if there are missing block number and if there is an incorrect stops uh, in there so these are the tests that are run and uh, based on these tests you'll be able to fix uh, some of these uh, data quality issues and therefore uh, you know the analysis on the a bot side will be correct yeah then next slide please yeah the other one is the data quality uh, bots compliance report uh, this will be present below the data quality report uh, so when uh, the uh, when the data set is published or updated uh, this report will also be generated and uh, th there are close to about 60 tests uh, 60 validations that are performed but uh, the key uh, validations that are important uh, from an abots perspective are that uh, missing knock code uh, incorrect versioning those are uh, the key piece of information uh, from an abots side so uh, with that let me give a quick demo of uh, you know when these reports will be generated and how you can access them uh, in bots. Okay, let me share my screen. Yeah, uh, can you all see my screen? Yep. Cool. So, uh, so as a as a publisher of data, uh, once you log into bots, I can click the publish bus open data. And here uh, we can provide the timetable, AVL, and fares uh, data information. And if we had to publish the timetable information, you will select uh, the relevant uh, information and do it. So here you have the list of uh, data sets that are already published uh, in different statuses. And if we wanted to publish a new data set, uh, we'll say publish and provide uh, the relevant details of the data set. And here, as I mentioned earlier, you can either provide a link to the data set that's hold, hosted in a, uh, a server, or you can manually publish a uh, data set. So in this case, if you wanted to manually publish it and hit continue, at this point, bots does a uh, few checks. We check if it's uh, compliant with the 2.4 schema, and then uh, we're also checking if it's compliant with the bots PTI profile. And then, in the review screen, you will get a, a validation report, which is the uh, bots compliance report that I talked about earlier. And then we'll also be running uh, the data quality report, uh, the additional set of tests for you to review. So all these uh, reports will be available to you before uh, you, you know, confirm to publish it. So uh, when you open this, uh, so if the data quality report is generated and available, uh, this is how it will look. Let me show. So data quality report is generated uh, with a score. And if you click the details of the DQ report, uh, you can find the details. It will be uh, categorized between critical and advisory. For this particular data set, there are, uh, uh, it, it is uh, having an incorrect knock code. Uh, and if you click into the details, uh, you'll know what is the impact of the uh, issue, where to find the knock code, and how you can fix them. So that detail will be available. So if you wanted to see all of the list of observations, uh, there is a, a de definitions page inside the report. So there are nine critical observations here. Uh, ones around backward date range, backward timing, fast timing point, timing between timing points, uh, if there are incorrect stop related information, uh, as well as incorrect knock code that's provided. So in addition to critical, there are advisory observations as well, uh, but it is important for you to uh, fix the critical observations. And as you fix the critical observations, the data quality score will improve and uh, your aim should be to you know move towards getting 100% data quality. So that's how you access the DQ report. And the other information is the uh, validation report. So if you click the uh, validation report, a zip file will open. 
uh, with a CSV exporting it. Let me know if you can see the CSV file that I'm sharing right now. Yeah, we can. Cool. So this will uh, list the file name uh, and the line where the issue is. And it will also list the different validations that failed for this particular uh, issue. And if you can see here, uh, this particular file has failed a versioning check. So it's important that uh, you uh, publish the data set with accurate versioning. Uh, and if uh, there is any issue there, uh, it will highlight it for you and uh, mention the specific line where you can fix them as well. So these are the two different kinds of uh, tests that are available in boards and uh, how you can access them uh, so that downstream in ABOTS, uh, these issues are, uh, you know, there is more accurate uh, uh, analytics provided. Yeah, that's uh, that's the uh, demo from my side. Thanks, Kamal. I'll just share my screen again. Cool. So, um the the point we, we want to get across as well is that the core foundational elements to providing um, analysis is is accurate um, and complete timetable information so we really wanted to to go through that in detail um, as Kamal mentioned we have two mechanisms one is the PTI profile observations of kind of critical importance to analyze bus open data is is the national operator codes um, and the versioning of the file so we can identify your schedules and which operator it belongs to but also um, what version of the data set we should be using to produce the analysis um, obviously more generally the pti profile represents a way um, for you to clearly present your data to the service so if it's not compliant with that profile there is a chance that we may not be interpreting the data properly um, so so that's important to get to get right as well um, and then we have the data quality uh, report which Kamal also showed to you and there are a number of observations in there that could affect what you're seeing so obviously again the wrong national operator code is going to um, cause us issues um, we won't be able to identify which um, operator your data belongs to and so on um, obviously things like fast timing slow timings no timing points uh, kind of indicate that the timetables may not be structured properly it may there may be some mistakes in there um, and that would affect uh, you know classing a departure as on time early or late if it's not um, kind of representing the ground truth in the timetables. Um, obviously incorrect stops, expired lines and missing stops again is an indication that the data may not be complete um, or it may be incorrect and, and if that's the case um, we can't uh, give an analysis against the ground truth because we simply don't have it. Um, so that's enough of talking about trans exchange data. If we move on to the Siri VM data, which is kind of the next rung in the ladder, um, we we need to receive live complete Siri data feeds. Um, again, of, of those 400 or so uh, organizations, we're only receiving um, 160 feeds, and that's just over half of those with trans exchange. So um, for the other half who have provided their trans exchange but haven't provided Siri data, um, we simply can't produce any analysis for them so this is really important to get to get right in order for us to to give you on-time performance analysis um again kamal briefly touched on this where to publish it in the service um it must send updates to us every 30 seconds for each bus um if, if we don't have that um, granular information and the more granular the better obviously um it's it's quite hard for us to tell when when a, a bus is departing a stop accurately um, are all the vehicles covered in the Siri feed? So sometimes we have seen some feeds that don't um, have all of the vehicles in um, that, that should be running. So we obviously need GPS information for all the vehicles to produce accurate and complete analysis. Um, and obviously the vehicle positions need to be accurate. If they're not accurate, we again can't tell accurately when a bus is departing a stop and that's, that's what it's all about. Um, what does this look like in Analyze Bus Open Data? If you go to your dashboard and select the operator that, that you want to look at, um, you should be able to see um, your feed monitoring statistics. So um, you'll be able to see there, you have an active feed on the right um, at the bottom. And then you also we also have expected and current vehicles that are numbers that are close together, hopefully exactly matching 
um, and that shows us that we're recording analysis information for this operator um, and, and all is good. Um, next up in, in the foundation elements, are we able to actually take that uh, vehicle location data and match it to the trans exchange? Um, so if we talk about this for, for a second, the, the biggest concern that we have is finding the correct operator um, and finding the schedules for that operator. So the the Siri VM uh, feed must have an operator F and, and that um, should be a national operator code and that needs to match the national operator code that you're using in your timetables. If they don't match, it's very hard for us to identify which vehicles should be matching to which timetables. Um, once we have a kind of matched uh, national operator code across those two different types of data sets. Um, ideally, we, we want to be able to have a one-to-one -one exact match from journeys to timetables. Um, so nothing is kind of left to subjective interpretation. And the way that we see people doing this is in the Siri VM feeds, uh, we include a match to the trans exchange journeys. So that's either in the kind of vehicle journey code element um, or in that ticket machine journey code element. So in one of those elements, we need um, a reference to the journey that's in the timetables, and then we can always take that vehicle and exactly match it to a journey in the schedules. Um, and that should give us very, very high matching, which means when you look at the feed monitoring section, you should see the expected vehicles and the current vehicles very closely aligned, if that's being done correctly. Obviously, if it's not being done correctly, we can still take things like the the line name, the national operator code, and the vehicle position, and and take a good guess at which journey it's running, and and that is something that we can do. But it does produce quite um, low matching numbers, and therefore um, the analysis will be incomplete for the operator. So, really, primarily, we want everyone to be produ um, producing data sets that can be matched exactly, so we can get 100% matching um, where we can. Um, so what does good matching look like in Analyze Bus Open Data? If, you, if you're achieving that, then what we see is the expected vehicles and the current vehicles uh, are very closely matched together. So on the right, we see an operator where it's good, but there are 30 vehicles that we should be seeing in the schedules that we simply can't match from the data that's been provided. Um, and if you look in on the right side of the screen, there's a yellow line and that, that yellow line represents data that we should be getting and it's completely missing. So we're, we're simply not producing um, on-time performance measurements for, for those um, buses because we can't um, identify them properly. Um, so that's a big missed opportunity and we want to make sure we get that um, those blue bars as, as high as possible and as close as possible to that dark blue line above it. Um, so if we move on to the to the differences we might see between different systems. So um, one thing to keep in mind is, is that we can, and systems do use different um, parameters to, to identify whether something is on time early or late. Um, it's pretty simple with an analyzed bus open data service, we're using um, kind of official uh, traffic commission definitions. So um, obviously not all suppliers will do that. Everyone can, can do things slightly differently. Um, so on time is anything from one minute early all the way up to five minutes and 59 seconds late. Um, early is if we're more than one minute early and late is if we're more than five minutes and 59 minutes, uh, five minutes and 59 seconds late. Um, so just keep that in mind when you're comparing analysis, just to make sure you're comparing the same uh, parameters um, as well. Um, and finally, right at the top of the pyramid, once we've got all of the things below correct, there are obviously algorithms that we use um, in the software to, to generate this information um, and this performance analysis. Um, so one of those we've already talked about is matching algorithms. If you're providing um, those that ability to match exactly between the um, vehicle positions and the timetables, as we discussed, then, then that's great. That shouldn't make too much of a difference. Um, but there are obviously um, algorithms that we use to, to classify when a bus has departed a stop. So um, when data is more than 20 or 30 seconds apart, you're obviously having to interpolate between those GPS points when a bus is actually leaving a stop. The more frequent the data is, the easier that is, and the smaller the difference you'll see. Um, but obviously, we do have to do that. There are different uh, kind of stop area sizes where you define a bus having actually left the stop. Um, so between suppliers, you may see small differences 
due to um, how these things are defined in the system. Um, but again, over time, as, as we get more accurate and complete data, um, this, this again shouldn't be a huge difference between suppliers. Um, so just to summarize the kind of core foundational elements, the operators have yourselves and um, have a lot of control over these aspects. So the core elements, are we getting trans exchange? Is it of high quality? Is it complete? Is it up to date? Are we getting vehicle positions that are kind of very um, regularly updated to the system? Do we Are we able to completely match um, on a one-to-one -one basis between the vehicles we're seeing and the journeys that are in the schedules? Um, these are things that can be influenced by the operators. They are really solid building blocks that, that allow us to get to the analysis. Um, if they're not, if any one of those is not done properly, the analysis is probably going to be incomplete or incorrect. So we really want to get those right. And there are some um, elements in the main service that Kamal talked about that help you to do that. Um, and one thing that's worth remembering is that if uh, the service is, if the analyzed bus open data service is struggling to kind of match your data and produce accurate analysis, um, it's it's quite likely that data consumers may not be able to do that as well. Um, so if you're able to provide those kind of core high quality data sets to the service um, and you do that well, that gives a very good basis for any data consumers to start to pick up and use your data um, and use it in an accurate way um, as well. So that's what we wanted to talk about today. Um, we want to open up the floor to any questions now. So if you have any, please type them in the chat and we'll try and answer them. Amy, have we had any questions so far? Yeah, we've had a few questions and so thank you to everybody who has um, been posting questions and we've been um, responding to um, most, if not all of them, I think. And so I hope that those of you who have asked questions, I hope that you've you've got the answers that you need and please let us know if you need any extra clarifications in the chat bar. Um, there was a question early on, Dan, that I thought was worth coming back to and just um, making clear for everyone's benefits because it's a really important one and so somebody asked um if it's not possible to match um an arrival because running information is missing or incorrect does that count on uh, count as on time um and we did clarify in the chat that only matched um journeys are contributing to the on time performance analyses um and so i just thought it was worth us making that really clear to everyone and i don't know dan if you want to say any more about that or or show um, um in only, the service. only that yeah it's if we can't kind of confidently tell when a bus has departed a stop um we simply put it down in this no data column so this tells you the number of departures for which we haven't got real-time data for so it, it doesn't get included in any of these three uh, metrics it just kind of gets put in a bucket on its own over here where it says no data so that's what that means thanks dan for showing that and hopefully that helps everybody um let us know if you've got any follow-up questions to that um there's also a question that came in just before we started the q a which we didn't get a chance to answer in the chat um from valerie who asked who checks the data supplied by the operators is accurate and um the answer to that um is that tvsa are responsible for monitoring um the provision of complete and accurate data sets by um, operators and so they are in the process of doing um, checks on the provision of the information um, and also what will be introduced in BODS in the future um, is a cross-reference back to registration information um, to help make that completely clear both to the operator and to any data consumers and also obviously to D DFT and DVSA themselves um, and so um, hopefully that answers your question Valerie. Um, we've just had a question from Tony asking, could the no data be a percentage against the total expected journeys too? So, um, Dan, I don't know if you want to yeah, respond to that good... immediately. And we, yeah, I'm sorry. Can, um, <laughs> back to the to the mm -hmm. screen. So, just to be clear, where we're talking about departures here, this is giving the total number for which we have no data. If we look at um, each stop you can see it see that as a percentage as Tony said which might be more useful so we can see that we are expecting 11,000 departures we only got 86.6% um, of those um, departures so 
the difference between the scheduled here, 11181 recorded, 9681, um, I think is 1500, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> um, so that kind of tells you how that matches up, but there is a percentage here at the top of this table um, as well, which, which tells you that. Thanks, Dan. I hope that helps everyone. Um, just checking the chat. Great, thanks Tony for, for your feedback. Um, and then Lee has just asked, I assume that there will never be a way of automatically checking VOD's data against the DVSA registration unless EBSR is made mandatory. Um, I, I don't know, Tim, if you if you want to come in at this point, I know that you're quite familiar with registrations. I believe that whether the registrations are made by EBSR or by paper registrations, I think that the DVSA hold data on both anyway. And so I think that it would be possible to check against either. Tim, do you want to add any comments on that front? Um, I mean, Lee, Lee's right is that the, at the moment with paper registrations, it's very hard or impossible for DVSA to do anything automatically so uh, they will be uh, looking at things and having to do some manual work there is a um, bit of work going on to review the registration process um, in the coming years and so that might well uh, change things and make life easier for the DVSA but at the moment, that's um, just uh, going to need to be a manual process. Thanks, Tim. And we'll just give it another moment in case anyone's got any other questions to add in the chat. Uh, there's one from Vivian who says, can you advise authorities or... Oh. Can how would you advise authorities to use the dashboard for developing a bus service improvement plan? It seems to only have data from December 2020, so not sure how Thanks. useful the data is. Does the raw data go back further? Yeah, thank you for catching that one, Tim. I hadn't noticed that one. And thank you, Vivian, for asking that question. Um, it is really important. And I guess it's probably a point that we haven't made explicitly clear in this presentation so far. But we absolutely hope that Analyze Bus Open Data as a Service will support authorities with their BSIPs. Um, in terms of the data that's uh, available, um, it goes back as far as um, the data was being made available in BODS and so um, the functionality to be able to publish um, live location data only came in in late 2020 and so for that reason that's why some of the analyses will only go back to late 2020 um, and so um, yeah that that's just based on that being the kind of starting point from when the data was being supplied in BODS so I hope that that helps to explain why it is how it is at the moment, Vivian. But um, going forward, obviously, the data will be um, provided in Analyze Bus Open Data, um, provided that the operators are publishing it in BODS um, continuously. And so um, it will be available um, on an ongoing basis going forward. So I hope that that helps. Um, and then I can see that Mark has just posted a question also asking a number of our operators also run services in other counties. Is there a way of splitting routes so that only those shown in your county, um, sorry, so that only those in your county are shown? Um, so it's a, a good question, Mark. And I guess one of the fundamental um, things about the way that the analyses in ABOD are derived is based on uh, NOx, so the National Operator Codes. And so for that reason, if you've got operators who operate within your authority, but also elsewhere, you, you will be granted permission to see that NOx data. And so that's why you'll be seeing analyses for outside of your area. Um, what we will be introducing in ABOD uh, later in the year is geography based uh, views of the data and so what we hope is that at that point because you'll be able to um, view the data and do analyses based on um, a geographical representation of that data we hope that that will help you um, be able to to zone in on the data that's relevant to you within your authority area 
So there should be some functionality coming later in the year that helps with that. Um, and then Vivian has just asked, um, is there a way, is there an easy way for those not particularly technical to analyze the raw data or better to wait for the geography? Um, my interpretation of your question, Vivian, is that um, how would you be able to look at the the raw data coming via BODs? And I suppose that the answer to that is that you can you can pull data yourself from BODs and you could do analyses on that yourself if if you if you would like to. Um, but in terms of viewing the data in a bod hopefully the summaries that we've given and as you say when the geography based um, functionality comes in later in the year we hope that that will give you easy ways to interrogate the data in a useful way for for what you need um, if there are kind of different types of analyses um, or different types of views that you would like to see. We're really keen to get your feedback. We're hoping that Analyze Bus Open Data will kind of do the hard work for you. Um, and so if you have feedback about things that you would find particularly interesting and useful that you would like to be presented in ABOD, please do let us know. Um, it's worth saying at this point that we're going to have a survey that comes out at the end of this session. And so we'd really encourage you to provide feedback and let us know what you think the really useful features of ABOD are um, and any other um, features that you'd like to see come in the, into the service in the future. So uh, we really do encourage you to, to fill out that survey and it really helps us to shape the service in the future. Um, so Jeremy has also just asked, can we filter by NAPTAN in an authority area? Um, Dan, I don't know if you want to comment on that in terms um, of the geography based views that are coming. Yeah, so obviously right now that, that functionality isn't there, but um it's it's good feedback so as we start to build out these new sections of the tool we can take that on board um, and perhaps work that in um, as well but yeah thanks for that Jeremy. Um, I'm conscious of time and so we'll just give it another moment also for any final questions um, before I hand back to Tim to wrap up on the session um, and what I'll also do is that I'm going to post the link to the survey um, where we'd like you to to give us your feedback on today's session and about the Analyze Bus Open Data service. Um, you will get an automated email from um, the sign up um, function that you used for, um, for this webinar. And so if you don't catch it right now, then there will be an email that, that gives you this link anyway, but just in case there's anybody who wants to um, submit their feedback right away after this session, um, I'm posting it in the chat in a moment. And I don't think, Tim, that we've got any final questions coming back in. Um, so at this point, I'll hand, I'll hand over to you to wrap up. Yeah, thank you, Amy. Um, and thank you, uh, Dan and Kamal, for uh, for your presentations. And thank you to uh, Patrick for helping out with the chat. Um, so um, th there's quite a lot going on with Analyze Bus Open Data Service, as you have seen. And it's going to continue to uh, to develop. Um, there are, have been uh, some events last month, and there are some other events um, um, scheduled in for um, next month, um, covering different aspects of of the service. And so um, you can find out about those through the um, RT website. We've got a special page for analyze uh, bus open data service. So please do visit that. To, uh, to find out more about um, the next set of, uh, of events and more information. Um, so I'd like to thank everybody again for um, presenting. Um, and I'd like to thank you for attending and asking your questions. Hopefully you've um, had them answered. If you've got any that you didn't want to ask in this open forum or um, didn't get a chance to put in, then please do submit them through the uh, through the feedback form that you'll get, um, and we will get back to you um, with a response. Um, and so, uh, thank you um, again for joining us. If you want to know more about Artig and the work of Artig, then please do feel free to get in touch. Um, details are on the screen. OK, thank you, everybody, and have a good rest of the day. 
Thank you for watching this Artig webinar. To find out more about Artig and our work, then please visit our website at rtig.org.uk. Thank you. Thank <music> you.